So let's start talking through some of the best draftees to watch this season with the Coates Talent League beginning this weekend. Of course, Waffle and Sample beginning and, 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 and Northern Football Leagues as well beginning in the, in the weeks to come. But talk us through some of your, your biggest names to watch from a draft lens this year. No one knows this space quite like you. Start with Harley Reid, obviously. Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he is a star. There's absolutely no doubt about it. The hype around him is real. It's, it's justified. There's things that he'll work on throughout this year, but what we've seen already from a bottom age point of view from Harley Reid has been as good as we've seen of any player. So I've said this a couple of times, but if he can back up his bottom age year in his top age season, then it's probably the best two years of any draftee we've seen across a two-year period. Players have done and had great draft age seasons. I don't think many have had great draft age seasons after having a bottom age season like yeah. Harley. So he, he trained at Essendon over the preseason Stood out there as well. Mm. Was at, I was at an intra club game where he was really impressive when he was thrown into the midfield. So he's going to keep improving that capacity to be a full time midfielder for, for Bendigo and also for Vic Country. But he's clearly uh, the, the leading number one candidate at this point and he's producing a CV at bottom age level that is outstanding. Now he has to take a, a, another year forward. I think we'll see him in some leadership roles throughout yep. this year and that'll be really good for him as well. Where do you think he'll spend the majority of his footy? He this played year. a lot of time in the back line last year, but then we saw that final Vic Country game where he went four in the last quarter, kicked two in five minutes, yeah. and turned the game on its head. So well, he saved the game for Vic Country down the other end <laughs> um, with some big marks. His marking sets him apart, so it does give him op- options to play at either end of the ground. I think we'll see him through the midfield, though, and, and yeah. see him fend off every second person that comes his way. He can take hangers. A couple of weeks ago at a practice game, he was jumping overhead. So... Yeah, he's an exciting talent. There's, the hype is justified on Harley Reid. Zane Dersmer, of course, is coming into the studio yeah. very shortly. Uh, I think he's right in that top couple mm. to start the season. Very silky, very talented player. Brilliant highlights, real. Had an exciting campaign last year. We'll speak to him about that. Playing for Vic Country in the Gippsland Power. Kicked a lot of goals. 190-odd centimetres. So a different type of player to what people and footy fans would see from Xavier, his older brother. But yep. has so much craft around the footy and just... When he has the ball in his hands, he makes great decisions and he uses it so well. So he is a standout for me too. And probably another player that can play in multiple positions this year and can showcase his talents in a number of Correct. different roles. One of your personal favourites, Nick Watson. The Wizard. Yep. Yeah, the Wizard, 18 goals from seven games in the NAB League last year, which is now, of course, the Coates Talent League. We talk about highlights real. That, yeah. <laughs> he is on the ground, in the air, in the face of opponents. <laughs> He's doing everything that uh, is going to make him an agitator, but also a really talented one. So yeah. he's not just about the um, the scuffle and, and the fun part of the, the footy. He is really hard to stop. He, he's a threat in the air and at ground level, as we spoke about, even though he's only 169 centimetres. So um, had a few shots at goal recently in the practice game last weekend for the Eastern Rangers. It's going to be an interesting watch all year. The, the debate and discussion, I'm sure we'll have it on Gettable throughout this season. How, how early can you take a player who's that size? There's not many scenarios in the past where that's yeah. happened. A lot of the best small forwards in the competition have come from the rookie list, to be mm. honest. Yep. Papley uh, amongst them. Mm. So there's those type of stories, but his talent level is extreme. So he's right up there um, and looking forward to some of his wizardry across this year. <laughs> he kicks goals from every part of the forward 50. Daniel Curtin's a player at the yeah. different end of the spectrum. 195 yep. centimetre player from Western Australia, a tall defender. Missed a bit of last year through injury, including the under-18 champs for WA, but was best on ground for the AFL Futures game on grand final day, which was obviously um, a big stage, uh, playing alongside some some of these guys, you know, Reid, Dersma, you know, these type of guys who are right up there in the ranks. He was really good that day. He had 20 touches and eight marks. Might also be trialled as a forward as well, so to have that versatility, but knowing as well that clubs rate key position players so highly. Yeah. Not many good key position players in defensive roles, go in the top five. Jacob Wiedering's clearly an outlier there. Over the last few years, Denver Granger Brass went uh, in the top five. Josh Gibkiss was another yeah, top he's, five, was top ten. But... Yeah, he's pretty close there. So it's rare for these guys to be in that range, but mm. he has done enough to suggest that he'll start the year there. Ashton Moyer saw some great highlights from him in his bottom age year. Yeah, well, <laughs> we talk about... Can I say highlights machine three times in, <laughs> in the top five? But he doesn't, ahead. He doesn't have a preferred foot. <laughs> he kicks on left and right 50 metres and weighs it up on the walk into goal. He, he is exceptional. I, I've never seen anything like his yeah. ability to kick on both feet. Talk about Jason Akamanis. Mm. He's probably the one that comes to mind. Nathan Brown was really good on both feet. Yep. I've got a thing about f- footballers. I love players who can kick on both feet. Sam Mitchell. 
Sam Mitchell's very good at too. So, uh, and I actually spoke to Sam Mitchell about that at the start of the year. I said, oh, look, what do you tell your players about uh, kicking on both feet? Because he was telling me about how he's been teaching his players how to kick some players, yeah. like just genuinely going out, how you had to hold the ball. He goes, oh, look, you don't have to be proficient on... You don't have to be super on, on your, your wrong side, but you have to be able to get out of trouble on it and yep. use it. And um, Moyer's got no trouble on that. He kicked 30 goals from 10 games last year mm-hmm. in Glenelg's under-18 side. Um, he could also play at half-back. He's got the spring in his step. He's going to be the guy who's going to create some really flashy moments. And, and he kicked four goals in a game for South Australia last year at under-18 level. So already uh, has some runs on the board there. Jed Walter, we know where he's going this year. We... 99% certain that he'll be heading to Gold Coast as part of its academy. Tell us about him. Yeah, he was up at Gold Coast a couple of weeks ago and bumped into Jed, and he's a big boy. And uh, on the weekend or a couple of weeks ago, he actually kicked four in a practice game and, and dominated. So that's what we come to see last year. He was a bottom age All-Australian. That doesn't happen very often. So he And that's also as a key forward. The, the thing with him this year will be to back that up. Uh, he's powerful. He's combative. He jumps in at packs and, and into them and crashes them. So you sort of like those draftees who like the physical contact and and he's got that part of it. So he'll play for the Allies this year, but be part of the Gold Coast Academy and yeah, there's a reason that the Suns have about 4 million points in, <laughs> in picks and, and he's part of that. Arthur Reid, brother of Zach who is at Essendon. Is he mm. a similar player? No, he's tall but he's not as similar at the moment. Yep. Z- Zach is a key defender uh, coming through the ranks in 2020 and since when he's joined the Bombers. Arch has been at the other end of the ground, I guess, in key forward battles at, at the backyard. You, you needed someone to be, be the forward and someone to be the back. I tell you so, what, he's done well as the younger brother to get into the forward role there. Well, that's true. And also Kyle Reid was the older brother, the oldest brother there who uh, was part of the, the Vic Country program a few years ago. So, Play some ruck work as well, 203 centimetres. Yep. So, there's a lot to like from a, a athletic capability point of view very nice kick it goal archer reed flicks the ball around with his hands it'll just be about getting opportunities and making them them land i think mm-hmm. you know, for him throughout this year draft ages or well, draft years are really tough for uh tall prospects generally I, yeah. I think the guys who dominate their draft years are generally uh, the midfielders who get so much of the footy and power through that way because taller types as we always know and, and speak about take a little bit longer to come together and progress but there's some stuff to work with there with Archer Reid for sure. Rattle through some more. Kane McAuliffe. Yeah. He had a groin injury last year and um, has, has been coming back from that, but really powerful prospects and spent some time training with the Crows as part of the AFL Academy program, inside midfielder who can get out of trouble. So he's one to keep an eye on. George Stevens, another one who had some injury last year uh, coming off his ACL. Uh, been in full training though um, for the Greater Western Victoria Rebels. He's bigger, stronger player. Um, clean, kicks with penetration. Probably starts off half-back, but moves into the midfield as the year progresses. Will Patton's another one who I think uh, is a prospect who we'll talk about a fair bit this year. Intercept defender, good composure, likely to play a bit of league footy as well throughout this season. And, and that'll be the step up for different players. Obviously, the non-Victorian players get those opportunities a lot more. But, yeah, Will Patton really rated for his, his leadership within the, the South Australian camp as well. So... Yeah, those are the, the 10, I think. Not necessarily my 10 in order right now, right here, right now. I was now. say, when's the phantom drop? <laughs> Do not hold me to this <laughs> in nine months. But I would say that these guys are going to be among the, the biggest discussed players. And there's some prospects outside of that that I'm really keen to watch as well. Will Lorenz, Colby McKercher, mm. Mitch Edwards, Nate Caddy, Cooper Simpson, Ethan Reid, another member yep. of the uh, Suns Academy. So, yeah, that's a bit of an overview, I thought. It was probably the perfect time with the Coach Talent League starting, Riley, that we get on Gettable and, and talk about what this year's draft's looking like because it's been much hyped, but there are some other players beyond Harley Reid who uh, have done some exciting things so far.